What's going on guys? We're back again with Piers Morgan versus pro-Palestine rapper Loki on the Israel-Palestine war. This is the full interview, 14 minutes long. I appreciate the love and support and the last videos that you guys all gave me. Obviously, we're over here trying to support the good message. Make sure to drop me a comment down below. Much love to all my people, my Arabic people all over the world. I got so many good messages from so many people all over the world. You know, Tunisia, Iraq, like just from everywhere, Morocco. So much love to everyone. Drop me a comment down below. Tell me where you guys are viewing from Iraq. I have so many people viewing from all over the world, guys. So much love. Today, this one's going to be even more fiery, I could imagine. And I've listened to Loki a lot, actually, when I was younger, guys. It's funny because Loki is a big time rapper in the UK. You know, very well spoken guy, has a lot of songs, Long Live Palestine, these different songs. So, this one should be incredible, guys. Let's get it. Welcome back to Piers Morgan Uncensored, live from New York City. Well, British Iraqi rapper and pro Palestine activist Kareem Dennis, better known as Low Key, has been a powerful and influential pro Palestinian voice before and during this conflict. The official version of his track, Terrorist, was taken off YouTube after the Hamas attacks on October the 7th, 14 years after its initial release. He's been highly critical of what he says is media bias and accused me of taking a pro-Israel slant on this show. Well, I'm joined now... He has, right? <laughs> Piers Morgan has, right? ...by Loki, who's at our London studio. Loki, thank you very, very much indeed for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Piers. Um, I, I mean, on the issue of whether I'm pro-Israel, I, I don't have a horse in this race. All this war i try and be balanced i try and have all kinds of views i think we've had more pro-palestinian people on this show in the last two weeks than any other new show in the world maybe getting huge audiences so i would take issue with that charge that somehow i am slanted one way or another i think this whole thing is a complete tragedy i know that you've been committed to the plight of the Palestinians for a long time, going back at least 15 years from what I can see in terms of you travelling to Gaza. Um, what was your reaction when you first heard about these attacks on October the 7th? Well, let's be clear. Reading the testimony of survivors of October 7th from Kibbutz Bi'eri, like Yasmin Porat, was extremely harrowing. What she alleges is not only that her husband was killed in the initial takeover, but also she then says that the Israeli military tanks fired on the room where the hostages were, killing 12 Israeli civilian captives. Jeez. We have also seen fantastic work in the Haaretz newspaper by Amos Harrell, where he speaks at length about uh, Brigadier General Rosenfeld, who was in charge of the Haaretz crossing. Now, when this military base was taken over, what he says, Amos Harrell in Haaretz, the well-known Israeli newspaper, he says that Rosenfeld, when he realized that the base was overtaken, called in an airstrike. This is in Haaretz. These are not my words. These are the words of Amos Harrell. What we then saw is since October the 7th, 22 Israeli civilian detainees killed in Gaza by Israeli airstrikes. The Israeli military has something called the Hannibal Directive. The Hannibal Directive was developed in Lebanon in the 80s by the Israelis with the clear understanding that they do not want the other side to take hostages. So, for example, you have the case of um, Hada Golding, Golding in 2014, what Israel called Operation Protective Edge, which killed over 2,200 Palestinians. But when uh, this Israeli soldier was taken captive by the Palestinians, Israel then proceeded to kill everyone, including the civilians in the area around where he was kept and the soldier himself. So what Israel has, unfortunately, is a policy of killing captives. If you look at the case of Gilad Shalit, this was yeah, an Israeli hang, uh, soldier. Just, all right, listen, allow I, me to finish. I, 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 allow me to finish. Well, yeah, and don't no, you can't just keep talking. You can't no, keep talking. No, no, I have and one talking, last talking. point to make, and I hope all that right. you'll allow me to make it. In the all case right. of Gilad Shalit, what happened was one Israeli soldier led to a thousand Palestinian prisoners being released. There is a clear understanding within the Israeli military and political elite that they do not want people to be kidnapped. So, therefore. <sighs> They, unfortunately, as history has shown us and as the directive within the Israeli military shows, they take action to kill their own captives that have been taken by the other side. 
Right, let me, let me respond to you. You tweeted on October the 7th, the arrogance to believe you could keep two million trapped in an open-air prison indefinitely, dot, dot, dot. That appears to have been your only comment about what happened. So, just for the record, do you condemn what Hamas did that day? I condemn the genocidal conditions which have created this violence. Every heartbeat, every human heartbeat is sacred to me. And that is what has compelled me to work as I have for the last 15 years to question. save lives, to save that lives and question. stop people dying, Piers. But that wasn't we my do, question. No, no, we do not have a clear picture of what mm. happened on October 7th because, unfortunately, too much of the media has relied on the Israeli military talking points which are given directly to them. Until so neutral observers, oh, so, so until neutral sure, okay, observers are able respond. to establish the facts of October 7th, I will not... I will not allow the talking points of the Israeli military to become dominant mm. of what happened on that day. You know, you are Palestinians the, are subject say, to a genocidal look, me, war. Collective punishment in Gaza is real. Let me, let mm. me respond. You are the only pro-Palestinian person I've had on the show in two weeks who has tried to make out that this just didn't happen on October the, the 7th or the, somehow you are was perpetrated by Israelis. You are Israelis. misrepresenting what I am well, saying. Do you, do you, well, I'm well, he just clearly, you know, he kind of, he didn't say it directly, but he kind of clearly said that obviously he thinks that all sides is bad, but because Piers Morgan basically makes it out to only be like that the, you know, the, the, the Hamas terrorists and stuff are the only bad people or whatever, you know, there's also another side to it, guys. So it's, he's kind of painting the, the both sides, you know, the, the one side to be worse than the other side. You know, which in reality, you know, that's not really the case, guys. You know, is 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 not the case as we've seen over the last few weeks, guys. You know, what I mean, they they kill way more civilians and improportionate people. It's uh, the Israelis do so. The government, guys. You know, I'm sure the people and stuff like that are, are great people and things like that. So, because I've said this before, like, you know, it's more of a government issue and the the way the government, and the military are doing it, rather than the people themselves, guys. Right? It's 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 wild. I've got two questions. They're very straightforward. Do you believe that 1,500 people were slaughtered, including 260 people at a music festival? You're a musician. And secondly, do you condemn the people who did it? They're not so, difficult Piers, I would like to quote something that you just said to the former spokesperson for the IDF. This was your mm. exact sentence not long okay. ago. You said, it's difficult to tell between combatants and non-combatants. So, yeah. you, the implication of what you said was somehow, it was understandable that Israel has killed a Palestinian child every 15 that. minutes in Gaza. I didn't say that. For the last, no, I but somehow they I couldn't tell that those children were not combatants, according to no, you. No, I didn't it's say that. It's understandable. I didn't say that, and I have said it is absolutely appalling, the number of children who are dying in Gaza. It's appalling, and it will get worse. I make no bones about that and, at and, all. And I have to I say, say, and I have to say... You have to start, sure. you have to start are, surely, from a humanity point of view, I can absolutely express my horror at the deaths of Palestinian innocent civilians, as I have done many times over the years. I think it's horrifying. Uh, and I think this is why I, I have a serious problem with the proposed ground invasion, because I think it will create uh, unbelievably large numbers of civilian casualties, and I'm not sure that the strategy will work. Um, but I'm just curious mm. why you, who is... I know you, you care about people. I know you care passionately about the Palestinian civilians. But you're the only pro-Palestine voice I've had who's even tried to suggest that what Hamas did on October the 7th was not as bad as we think. So, is that what you but think? What I mean, do, do you we not... think? But what do we think, Piers? The information is not clear. As I've said it's to pretty, you, it is all human life it is, clear. is sacred. Hamas is sacred. even tried to hide it's it. Sacred. But I'm look, not trying to hide anything. You're trying to hide well, something. No, it's trying to... No, know, no, with respect... Clear. Mm -hmm. With respect, you are trying to, you are definitely trying to dissemble here, and I'll explain why. I've given you an opportunity to simply say whether you condemn what Hamas did, which, by the way, they have brazenly boasted about. They posted videos celebrating what they did. Mm -hmm. There is no doubt about what Hamas did. They want you to know what they did. They want me to know that. They want the world to know. They killed Jewish people in the main and in Israel with impunity. 260 people at a music festival, babies, grandmothers, they kidnapped 200 people. God knows what's happened to them. Now, you can shake your head, but what you can't do is deny that that happened because Hamas have admitted it brazenly and with and great, I, and I have great pride. And I have publicly stated...
So and secondly, if they, if they were... I'm sure, I'm sure he's already publicly said that Hamas are not good, but <clears throat> you know what they do when they bomb these countries, like America, guys. You know, I, I like American stuff, but when they bomb these countries, they, you actually create resistance against the people, guys. Like, when they bombed Iraq and stuff, you know, they turned into different forces and stuff, you know, they turned to ISIS. ISIS was created because of the invasion of Iraq and Afghanistan, so... You, know, you gotta be careful bombing these places, guys. You know, killing innocent people is not good, man. You know, if, if someone came to your place and started bombing your country indiscriminately, you know, there'd be retaliation, right? And that's not, to, you know, to say that it's good, but like, you know, it's crazy, guys. The way they, they the way they operate these countries, the Western world, a lot of the times, right? And obviously, no one's no one's saying Hamas are good, right? He said it. He publicly condemned them, but at the same time, it's like. You know, we need to be clear on facts first. Like everyone said, we need to be clear on facts, and we need to be clear on what's you know what's going to be that they're going forward, not just bombing hospitals and things like that. You know, craziness. Admitted it. Do you condemn what they did? I absolutely mourn the loss of all human life in this conflict, and I have struggled for 15 years of my life in a way mm. that appears to be honest. You haven't, okay? And I take you as an empathetic person with a high level of emotional intelligence, OK? Mm. I have struggled for 15 years of my life to stop the killing, for a ceasefire now, to stop deaths. But I have to say, Piers, that actually this line of questioning, unfortunately, on a personal level, is somewhat hypocritical, and I'll explain why. Mm. On April 18th, 2022, you said the exact phrase that you feel like Nelson Mandela walking out of prison on the long road to freedom of speech. Today, there is a statue for Nelson Mandela outside Parliament. Now, Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, mm. Beit Salim, and even the Harvard Law School mm. have said that Israel practices apartheid against the Palestinian people. Do you know what the ANC struggle against apartheid entailed? Are you aware that the ANC are believed to have very unfortunately, horrifically and terribly taken the live, lives of children and civilians in their struggle against apartheid? So, Piers, you seem absolutely content to not only compare yourself to Nelson Mandela, who served 27 years in jail <sighs> for what they described as terrorism at the time, mm. but yet you cannot see what the vast majority of human rights organizations in the world see when they look at the Palestinians. Mm. When you look at UN Resolution 194, paragraph 11, the Palestinians have the right to return home. Almost a, a million of them were displaced in 1948 with the foundation of the State of Israel. And what mm. we are now on the brink of is Palestinians, million of, millions of them, being driven into the Sinai Desert with help of the US Delta Force, yeah, but Loki, with Loki, help let me of jump the British. In. This let me jump is in. a manufactured, making... an Israeli manufactured okay. humanitarian catastrophe in you Gaza. Making... There is a 23% making... infant mortality Loki, rate let me say in something. Gaza. Whew. Let me say something. I can... It's powerful words right there, man. I completely agree with you about the plight of the Palestinian people. I've tweeted about this for the last two weeks. No, no, to be fair, you haven't, Piers, and this is not journalism. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shirin Abu well, Akhla was tweets. journalism. Yasser Murtaja was journalism. Mu'taz uh, Azaiza, that's journalism. Palestinians right. are reaching out from the cage that Israel has put them in, and they are trying to speak to the world. Yeah, and they are I'm being met. Saying, they are being met fine. with cold indifference. And I would say mm. to you, Piers, I would say to yeah. you, that that gentleman that you've just had on the show, Mark, mm -hmm. Regev, Mark Regev, he belongs in The Hague. David mm -hmm. Petraeus, you know, Piers, you made your reputation as opposing the invasion of Iraq. Well, yeah. I would ask you, journalist to journalist, how mm. could you justify the interview you just gave to the head of US forces in that Ooh. illegal occupation of oh. Iraq that David Petraeus led? Damn, he was then the bro. head of the CIA. Both of the... Oh, my... Bro, this might be one of the biggest... This this is gonna blow up. I don't know how this only's got two million views. Damn, bro. Bro, he is talking facts, bro. This is in, this is unbelievable. Of Iraq that David Petraeus led. He was then the head of the CIA. Both of the individuals that you have just had on this show deserve to be in the Hague 
tried for war crimes. I am not anything like them. I mm. have not hurt a fly. Those two men have. Why are they given the respectability that mm. you gave them with your interview? And why am I interrogated as if I am somehow someone that could hurt a human being? Well, certainly in Mark Regev's case, I pushed him hard on all the positions that Israel wasn't is currently hard. adopting. That wasn't well, okay. hard. I, let me explain. Because I, I did a tweet today, and I, I meant every word of this. I said, I have great respect for anybody who, in the immediate aftermath of this appalling terror attack, said it was outrageous and appalling. There are right? 1,500 Palestinians no, on, still under the rubble in Gaza. Exactly. I, you've had your say. They're still but under the rubble, Piers. They're here's still under problem. the rubble. I You're said, not bringing them I up. Said with those, that. I said those who, whose instinctive reaction was not to feel that, and I think you're one of them, because your reaction was to say the arrogance to think you could keep two million people trapped in an open-air prison indefinitely, as if somehow that justified what happened that day. Piers, it didn't Piers, justify Piers, what you happened you know exactly that day. what you're doing. And you should be able... The point, the no, point no, when that tweet no, was sorry. sent, the point when that able, tweet was sent, key, you had not had seen your, anything had you happened. You have had your... You've had your criticism of me, and that's fine. You're perfectly entitled to it. Like I said to you, I, or you said about me, I believe in free speech. You're entitled to your opinion of me, of David Petraeus, of Mark Regev. But I'm also entitled to judge you as somebody who did not find it in themselves to express anything involving any I've outrage just or it. any... I've just expressed uh, it. And, and, and Piers, well, this is not journalism. The idea of us comparing our moral compasses and somehow mm, I mm. have a deficient moral compass. Somehow I am a I moral monster. That. You know, you know what's that. true? You know what's true? Bro, he's is I, I am that. not. The people that have shown a cold indifference to the ethnically cleansed Palestinians, dispossessed, mm. one in three every refugee in the world is Palestinian. They are the largest refugee right. population. Those who have turned a blind eye to their suffering are those that need right. to be seriously interrogated about their moral compass. And I would ask you, Ooh. I would ask no, you, before we end the show, no, I would ask okay. you that I am able to read out the names of the 20 Palestinian journalists no, you that can't. have been I'm killed sorry. in Gaza. I have time so because I have two so, more guests. So you're We're censoring me. We're supposed to have eight so minutes for them. There's 20 journalists, have, so I'm being no, censored now. And I'll tell I you something to, else. You're not being this censored. Badge, this You've badge, had more... this badge, All right. zoom in on this badge. This badge okay. was given All to right. me by an employee of this building who said they were told mm. they could not wear this badge because it was the Palestinian flag. You talk about <laughs> uncensored, <laughs> this is censored. Nobody, Damn, this badge, bro. I haven't bro. told anybody they can't wear the badge. I have told nobody they, they can't wear the badge. Bro. So that's a ridiculous thing to say. I'm in New York, uh, but good to see you, Loki. I appreciate you coming on the program. Oh, bro, roasted again. Bro, how many times is Pierce Morgan going to get roasted? <laughs> Shit. All right, guys, I absolutely love you all, man. Low-key, that was amazing. Bro, I, bro, I'm not going to lie. I got a bit emotional there, man. Very, very powerful from Low-key, bro. Very, very powerful stuff. Like, it's it's very sad, guys. It's very sad. But much love to all my, you know, I mean, all my people, um, you know, that I get much love from all my comments that I get, guys. I, like I said, I get people from Iraq. You know, Palestine, from uh, Morocco, Tunisia, everywhere, you know, Arabic countries and Muslim people. So I absolutely love you guys all. I'll see you guys in the comments down below. Let them know, guys. I know everyone's posted on his channel as well. <laughs> they're, they're roasting Pierce Morgan on his channel as well, guys. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one, man.